the extra soap with the extra scent and the extra things no hi guys it's Vess. welcome back or welcome to my channel if you're new in today's video we're going to be talking about 10 mistakes to avoid with your belly piercing i made this video last year where i spoke about my experience and how it happened and everything and a lot of you guys commented and told me how your experience was and some of the mistakes you made and were asking for tips and things to avoid don't forget to subscribe and like and comment thank you guys so much for wishing happy new year and i hope everybody had a great christmas and i hope you guys are ready for 2021 i know the beginning of this year has been kind of crazy but i hope you guys have your vision boards ready and are ready to make the best out of this year so with that said again don't forget to subscribe and let's get started I'll link the video I made last year down below and also right up here along with other videos that I think you guys should watch as well. My birthday just passed and I recorded myself doing my makeup for my birthday pictures. So if you guys want to see it, let me know and I'll post it. The first mistake to avoid is cleaning it non-stop. When I first got my piercing, it was in the summer of 2018 in July and I was cleaning it constantly. Like I'm talking 10 to 15 times a day. Not cleaning it is bad, but cleaning it too much is so bad because it's excessive. When you get your belly pierced, you should make sure you clean it two to three times a day and make sure you're rotating it, but not moving it too much to get all around both holes because, you know, top and bottom hole. You should also make sure the soap enters the hole and make sure to use antibacterial soap. Don't be using like the extra soap with the extra scent and the extra things, no. Make sure you use antibacterial soap and only cleaning it two to three times a day. Cleaning it more than that can lead to infections and leading it to get more keloids and things like that. So two to three times a day and no more than that. Number two is not going to an experienced piercer. This was a huge mistake I did. I went to one near Fordham in the Bronx where like I got like my second piercing, I believe. Every time that I had gotten my piercings done there before, I would do it with the same guy, the owner of the shop. But this woman, I didn't really know her and I didn't really ask a lot of questions and I didn't really see her name anywhere. I don't even know if she was new. I don't know what day that was for her. I didn't know anything about her. Avoid going to places like malls or like tiny, tiny shops in like random places. Make sure it's like an actual shop with people who are actually licensed and people who actually know how to do these things. I said actually like 50 times. But go to somebody who is experienced because that would lead to less infections and to less problems with your belly piercing. When you go to a proper shop, make sure that they are reliable, that they're cleaning and they're sanitizing, especially with COVID going on and so many things, infections and diseases going around. It's important to get, go to somebody who will sanitize the equipment and the metals to get the piercing done. Number three, do not use Listerine. This was something the unexperienced inexperienced piercer told me she told me to use listerine and that led to a whole bunch of issues with my belly piercing don't use something that's like rare that you're like why would i use something i with in my belly piercing avoid using listerine at all costs if they tell you to use listerine don't do it that was something the piercer told me to do with my belly piercing and also told my cousin to do with her nose piercing my cousin ended up having to take out the piercing having to get it re-pierced with somebody else and it just got so ugly so make sure that you do not use listerine or any rare products on these piercings number four is to avoid wearing tight clothing this goes hand in hand with me getting it in the summer i wanted to wear little crop tops and high-waisted jeans and super tight leggings and shorts with my piercing the rubbing and the irritation from the clothing is horrible for your new piercing when you get a new piercing, make sure to use looser tops, things that fit you kind of flowy, and lower cut jeans. Like, we're not talking like 2007 super, super low, low, low cut jeans, but something that's not gonna be sitting right on top of your belly line. Something a little bit lower, like a mid-rise jean. A good tip is if you feel like something you're wearing is gonna rub against it, irritate it, knock into it, try to put something like a band-aid over your belly piercing so it doesn't get caught in your clothing. Not avoiding these tight, tight clothing leads to scarring and infection. Number five is not asking your piercer enough questions. This was something I didn't do and it's definitely a mistake you should avoid. Make sure you ask your piercer a lot of questions, even if they're experienced, ask them. I know it could be kind of embarrassing a little bit because you're like, oh my gosh, like 
it's kind of like if you're getting a tattoo or something like that and then you're like isn't the needle supposed to be this way even if that's their job and they know it's important to ask questions because at the end of the day it's staying on your body you're the one getting it and if something happens to it an infection whatever happens it's gonna be on your body it's not gonna be on theirs so make sure you ask a lot of questions good questions to ask are how many of these have you done what are some good tips to keep it healthy how should i clean it is there anything i should avoid doing during the healing process asking these questions is good before or maybe after if you ask it before you see how experienced they are and how much they know because if they tell you to use listerine during your healing process then you know that maybe you shouldn't get that piercing with them number six avoid getting pierced with a tiny ring this along with the listerine was one of the main reasons why my piercing got infected when you get this piercing as many of you guys know you have to clean it two to three times not 10 or 15. If the ring is too small, make sure you ask to get it changed to a bigger one. That's what I eventually had to do with mine because when I would try to lift it up or put it down, it was irritating it more than I could clean it. So you would have to push it up, put some soap in it, push it down, put some soap in it, and be able to rotate it. When the ring is too small, you're pushing the tissue, you're pushing your skin, and it's not good. Getting a bigger one will make it easier to clean and so much better for you. Number seven is getting into different forms of water. For some people, I've heard that getting in the water has helped them. This was not the case for me or anybody that I was super close to that got a belly piercing. I didn't think my body was super sensitive until I started getting into different forms of water with my new piercing. A belly piercing could take up to a year to heal properly. And in those first three to six months, it is the most delicate thing in the world. It is the most vulnerable to get infections and to get really bad and getting into waters there's so much bacteria in the waters lakes especially public pools in new york dirty oceans and rivers have so much bacteria in them even the freshwater little lakes have bacteria in them most piercers suggest not to get in any type of water at least in the first couple of weeks that you get your piercing if you really have to get into water let's say you're going to dr in a couple of weeks and you just got it try using a waterproof bandage and if it's not super urgent and you're going like in the next month or two, try to at least go two to three weeks, three to four weeks, four to five weeks without getting into the water, especially those first couple of weeks. Number eight is something I cannot emphasize to you guys enough in my last video. A mistake you should avoid is removing your jewelry too soon. Removing the jewelry not only could close up your piercing before it's done healing, but it could also allow bacteria to get into your site where your piercing was. It goes into the hole where your jewelry was and completely make a nasty mess, even worse than it was. I know when you have your keloid, it's so easy and convincing and so nice of an idea to take out your piercing and just not deal with it again. But the thing is, even when you have your keloids, leave it in. Let's say something really, really bad is happening and it's giving you fever and it's driving you crazy then definitely go to a doctor, but try not to take it out until advised by them. Taking it out makes it even harder for you. And it's something I so glad I didn't do when I had my piercing, my piercing was really, really bad. Even when it was at its worst, I made sure to keep it in and just try to fix the routine and clean and clean and clean to avoid these messes. Leave the jewelry in place at least for six months while you first get it. Because as I mentioned, it becomes super difficult once you take it out and let's say in the future you want it again, putting the jewelry in and getting it re-pierced is a home and nail. So avoid removing the jewelry at all costs. If you have to take it out, take it out. But avoid it, avoid it, avoid it. Number nine is something that shocks me that people do. It's getting pierced with a gun. As shocking as it is for me to hear, it's not that rare. Some people actually get pierced with a gun. Some piercings are good with the gun. For example, if you get these little here in the little fat of your ear right here, but other ones are not good to get with a gun. For example, your belly piercing, piercings up here, this piercing right here, your nose. Do not get those pierced with a gun. These guns are often not sanitized the way they're supposed to, especially for the area. This leads to infections and bacteria getting into your piercing before you even have it. Another huge reason is because of the action of the piercing gun. The piercing gun is a very forceful tool. 
it literally shoots right in and it's really really fast when you have the needle it goes in gradually it's not as much of a blunt trauma as the gun the gun is super fast and it puts in the jewelry and pierces you at the same time very forcefully this is bad for your skin this is bad for the piercing this is bad for you this is bad for the healing process it really leads to a lot of pain and scarring so make sure when you get your piercing and if the piercer comes out with a piercing gun make sure you be like mm -mm, please switch it to a needle because a needle is the best way to get pierced for your belly piercing number 10 and the last tip is to make sure you avoid using iodized salt i don't know if i said that right but iodized salt aka the salt you eat with mainly try to use sea salt sea salt is the best salt ever if it's organic even better before i had what helped me which was the saline wound wash i made my own sea salt soak at home a good formula for this mixture is half a teacup of sea salt for every one cup of water once you finish soaking it you can put it in like a cup and put it over your belly piercing or take cotton pads and soak it in the water in the mixture you just made and then put it over your belly button and then after you finish that make sure you wash it with antibacterial soap and water using mild antibacterial soap and water is also a really good way to clean it if you could use both methods together that's great but if you only could use one you could use either or i would suggest the sea salt soak first and just make sure you rinse it out after the sea salt soak relieves inflammation it removes the crust and also flushes out the wound as the piercing is healing. Using the iodized salt does not have the same properties as sea salt and it's not good for your piercing. If you're desperate, don't use that salt. Just use mild antibacterial soap and water. So these were 10 things that I hope you guys avoid when getting your belly piercing or having your belly piercing. I hope this video has been helpful for you guys. If you guys have any questions, any suggestions, of course, let me know down below when you guys don't find me here you guys can find me on instagram or on snap i just made a twitter i have like 10 followers but i'm there i'll link everything down below if you guys have any questions or suggestions let me know also down below don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you guys in my next video bye